The Cube at EMC World 2014 is brought to you by EMC. Redefine. VCE. Innovating the world's first converged infrastructure solution for private cloud computing. Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. Hello, welcome back. This is Jeff Frick here. We're on theCUBE, we're at VMworld. Or see, I did it again. We were talking about this before we went on air. <laughs> see, that's your problem. You keep <laughs> saying VMworld. I know. It's part of the Federation, though, and that's, that's all right. good. We're at EMC World 2014. This is the fifth year the Cube has been at EMC World. It's actually where the Cube got its start, so it's a very special place for us to come back. In fact, this year we're so excited that we brought not one but two cubes. So double the uh, double the fun, double the pleasure, double the insight that we can get twice as many guests to come on the show, share their insights with you, and tell them what to, tell you what they're working on to help you execute it on your side. So we're joining this segment by my uh, co-host Steve Keniston, the storage alchemist, and thanks, Jeff. Thanks for the introduction. Um, we're here live in Las Vegas, as Jeff said, here at EMC World 2014. Um, you know, extracting the signal from the noise and going out and finding the, the greatest industry practitioners, bringing them on the cube and trying to help share that knowledge with our, uh, with our insiders. So, you know, let's get right down to it. Our next guest, uh, David Bratt, Director of um, Technology Services for Miami Children's Hospital. Uh, Welcome to theCUBE, Dave. Thank you, I'm glad to be here. Great, thanks. Hey, so for our practitioners out there, why don't you just give us a little level set, Children's Hospital, tell us about it. Sure, so we're a children's hospital based out of Miami, Florida. Our hospital's in a smaller city called Coral Gables specifically, and we serve uh, patients and families all throughout uh, Palm Beach County, all the way through Miami-Dade County, as well as some international patients due to our telemedicine initiatives. Very good, and so Director of IT, give us a little bit of insight as to your, uh, your overall infrastructure. Yes, yeah, so the majority of what we have is storage, storage, storage. Uh, it's, ton it's growing <laughs> tremendously, as all the reports are saying, uh, as many people are reading here at uh, EMC World, not VMware World. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that's the, the bulk of where we spend most of our time. Uh, we also manage the network and telecommunications environment, uh, but the storage growth in our environment is clearly the one that's really growing the most. Well, so storage is uh, big for your group. We're here at a storage conference, EMC World. What, uh, what jumped out at you so far? Tell us what's something exciting. Uh, two main things really, we've been a, an Isilon customer for about a year now, uh, and that environment alone has tripled uh, within that time frame. And we, have, we use it for all facets of unstructured data, uh, DICOM imaging, any type of video repository, as well as we're replicating that data for protection. Well, so tell us a little bit about um, what led you down that, so I think we were talking a little bit before the segment, you've had Isilon for? About a year. About a year now? Yeah. So, you know, what were some of the things you looked at going down the road? Why were you choosing an Isilon type of platform? Maybe some of the other things you looked at and then ultimately, why you decided on the platform? Sure, so cost is always a factor, so we needed a solution that can grow with us and scale rapidly. Uh, we didn't want any complexity or any headaches doing migration after migration like we used to with older storage arrays. Uh, so that was clearly one of the ones we were looking out for. Uh, manageability and ease of use. Uh, we no longer need highly trained uh, storage uh, personnel who are so specifically trained on one particular type of an array, uh, they can manage the, the product very simply, uh, allocate file shares and assign permissions in a snap of a finger. Give us, uh, just give us a quick quick uh, snippet. How much capacity under management? Uh, we, we have somewhere, we're about a half a petabyte right now. Half a in, petabyte. In our environment. So uh, Dave Vellante on the other cube and I often have a conversation. How do you protect a half a petabyte or how do you back up a petabyte's worth of data? And our answer is always, you don't, but <laughs> <laughs> somewhere along the way you've got to protect that information, yeah. that's valuable information, Children's Hospital, that's, yes. probably, uh, that's probably under a lot of regulations. Kind of yeah. tell us about the, the protection of that environment. Sure, so we do use a typical backup system to, to spin that off the tape and send it off site. Uh, primarily though, we rely on the Isilon technologies with the snaps as well as the replication to our secondary data center to protect that data. So it's very rare where we actually have to go back to our backup system, which is another advantage of that Isilon product. Fantastic. So talk about grow, 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 because you, you're kind of out on the edge. You got uh, all the regulations obviously in healthcare. You got new regulations in healthcare, which I'm sure are creating some fun for you. But you're also kind of on the leading edge of Internet of Things. Yes. And we hear about all the time, all the time, all the time. GE talks about, but a lot of that is healthcare. And unlike, uh, as we often joke, if I don't serve up the right Yahoo ad, you know, and it's a car instead of a mattress, not a big deal. But 
clearly that's a little bit different in the healthcare arena where it's, you know, you don't want to serve up the wrong recommended drug or something that you're allergic to or all kinds of bad things can happen. So talk about how, how real the Internet of Things is and what you're seeing and how that's really exploding your data set. Yes, there's, there's no doubt about it that in the healthcare field, there's tons of regulations we have to follow. At the end of the day, for us, it's somebody's child that we're taking care of. So the last thing we want a patient or a family member to worry about is their, their data is getting in the hands of somebody else. So with some of the inherent uh, technologies in Isilon, we're able to lock down those file shares, really make sure that it's only that patient that can get to that data or that physician at the time taking care of that patient uh, so, and nobody else, which is uh, key to us. And if uh, you know our group, I'm very fortunate to work with a, a great team who appreciates change. They're very agile and flexible and can adjust to those regulations. And as long as we've got good technologies like the uh, EMC products, uh, we, we're pretty good. Then what about the explode? Explode, yes. exploding stuff from all the different data sources. Yes, because everything's electronic nowadays. As everybody has an electronic medical record and we have to retain those records for a very long time. Uh, and we're also gathering uh, information about that data, so it's data on top of data, which is mainly driving our growth in the research realm. And so what's next? So you've got all this data, it's growing. Kind of what are some of the next challenges you, you, you know you're going to have to face coming up here on the horizon? Yeah, so now it's to make sense of the data, try to come up with personalized treatment plans for our patients to make sure that if a person comes in with a particular diagnosis, we know the path, uh, the protocol to cure them and to hopefully remove their disease or their infection. Uh, so the data warehouse and genomics projects are huge for us uh, on the Isilon product specifically um, to go to that next level. And uh, so it seems like that there would be a, an analytics play that's on top of that. Do you do any analytics today? And, and if not, you know, kind of is that what you're looking for to the future? Uh, we do some analytics, but we're starting to focus on the Hadoop technology on Isilon a little bit now. Uh, but we're just starting to dabble into that arena. Very good, and then are you going to be tying some of that uh, we had a, a guest on earlier today where we were talking about how, uh, you know, the Watson knowledge, right, of yes. being able to tie into this global resource of, you know, different diseases and that sort of thing to really take patient care from a, from a get well, you know, soon to get well now type of thing. How, what does that look like for you guys? Yeah, I think there's a lot of companies, we're no different than any other healthcare, we're t and same with IBM's Watson product, we're just trying to get to the right answers as quick as possible to take the best care of our patients. Uh, you know, IBM has Watsons, we have our own product that our uh, enterprise data warehouse team has built, and we're, we're hopeful that it's the, the right path to go, uh, more so for the patients and families that we serve. So we talked a lot about storage. Tell us a little bit about some other parts of your infrastructure that, that complement your storage and be kind of like tough to do without right now. Yeah, uh, video is a big play for us as well, and not just a raw video feed, but with the medical equipment, uh, given our telemedicine initiatives. So now we're even treating people internationally outside of our borders and being able to store all that information, not only just the video feed, but tying together the medical data with all the telemetry equipment. Interesting. So talk a little bit about, because we always, we always do, you know, people process tech, right? It's all three of those things. And, you know, doctors are notoriously uh, slow, slow adopters on tech, or at least that's their reputation. I don't, I, my dad's a Jeff dentist, he's a little bit slow. But I am curious to know, kind of, I'm sure, you know, on one hand, it's, it's, it's kind of a pain. On the other hand, you've got a lot of young doctors that are probably coming in that have grown up with digital technology their entire life. Somebody said the other day that the, uh, the that first generation is already 28 years old, so clearly they've been around the block and they went to school that way. But talk about kind of how the technology is permeating in from the doctor's point of view and how they're leveraging these tools to do things that they either couldn't do before or they can do a whole lot better. Yeah, it's, it's definitely the wave of the future, so we have a, a fairly good relationship with our physician community. Our uh, chief medical information officer is a li liaison between the two. Chief medical information yes. officer. Now, is that, I've never heard that. Is CMIO. That, yes. is that, are there a lot of those? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. okay, good. So he really helps us make the, the, the relationship with the physician group and to adopt all those different technologies. He walks around with an iPad everywhere. The majority of our residents do rounding on iPads, so they're really embracing the mobility. Uh, primarily because it's access to their data real time from anywhere. Uh, and if they can get it quicker than walking over to the computer over there, why not? And that's where they see the biggest uh, benefit so far. And is his background a technology background or, uh, or a medical background? No, he's a, I, I call him an IT person in the closet, but he's uh, trained medically. So he's really adopted it and uh, come about and embraced it and the power that it can do. And then how do you work together prioritizing new types of projects, new types of technology, uh, you know, Within, within that realm. 
and within your budget, obviously. And within your budget. Of course. He probably so wants all we, kinds we, of stuff. Yeah, we, we all have budgets, Cats and we've been able to uh, align with the budgets, of course. And you know, the strategy is kind of tough because the consumer-driven market drives everything. So we have to keep up with that. So when the physicians go to the conferences, we're already handing them the next device versus them asking it from us. And then are you slowly moving to uh, to BYOD devices? It sounds like you already got the iPads. Are the applications and the, the delivery moving into kind of standardized devices versus specialty devices? Correct, so it, it almost doesn't matter to us what type of device you have. As long as you have an internet connection, we can securely get you to your data rapidly without any delay. And then talk about, you, you've mentioned it a few times, remote care. How remote care has evolved both, both because we can with the technology and then you know kind of what the impact of that has been yeah. to people. Yeah, it's incredible what's available today. So I would call it like Skype on steroids. So it's it's more than just a video feed. It does tie into all the medical equipment. And so you can get heart rate, pulse, all the things you would typically have to go to a physician office to get and have a trained clinician read for you. Nowadays the technology is is available that anybody can hook something up and it just sends it to our, our uh, telemedicine command center and gets translated into useful clinical information. Wow, so it sounds like you guys have a really good handle on your data center. So if that's if that's uh, true, kind of tell us a little bit what keeps you up at night. <laughs> the next biggest thing, we uh, <laughs> you know, Miami Children strives to be innovative. We have a very uh, um, innovative executive team who supports us and sponsors everything we try to dabble into. Uh, we won several awards in that arena, so it's just trying to stay that next uh, what the next curve is or that next bubble. Uh, but we get there before it bursts. Do you have one on on your uh, roadmap that you're looking at? Uh, you know, tele telemedicine is, is the buzzword for us in the day, as well as analytics. So those are the two main strategies that we're focusing on. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Appreciate it. Like I say, we love to learn from practitioners. We love to hear from people that are executing this new technology for the benefit of, uh, of, of not only business, which is great, but also people, and especially children, which we all have a soft spot in our heart for, which is the right thing to do. So thanks for coming on theCUBE. We're live at EMC World 2014, lovely Las Vegas, the Sahara Convention Center in the back of the Palazzo. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Stay with us.